Will, my brother, Will Taylor. And uh, we are joined today by the master distiller for Blackened, uh, which is Metallica's whiskey, uh, Rob Dietrich. Rob, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Glad to be here. Excited about it. It's all right. You don't have to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, Anytime we can nerd out about whiskey, I'm always excited. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, man. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, just the brand itself, just to, to get us kicked off. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we are a blend of North American whiskeys. We are uh, a collaboration that was created by the uh, the late, great uh, Dave Pickerel. Um, I'm sure if, uh, if we're talking whiskey, most people have probably heard his name a few times. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave was the former master distiller for uh, Maker's Mark, um, also created Whistle Pig and, and countless other uh, brands out there. And, uh, and of course, the collaboration is with the band Metallica, which uh, I'm a huge fan of in the first place. Um, and, and it's really kind of extraordinary because the, the band, um, you know, everything they do when they when they create a record, when they make an album, they they throw a thousand percent at it. You know, they, they use the best the best equipment, the best engineers. Um, and when they came up with the idea to create a whiskey, you know, they really were really careful. They, they didn't want to just go to a large whiskey maker and say, hey, can you make a, a, a whiskey, you know, a Metallica whiskey, we'll slap Metallica on it and, and it's just fine. They really wanted to make a whiskey that could stand on its own in the whiskey world. And they wanted someone who was just as, you know, uh, talented in their craft as, as they were to create that whiskey. And that was, that was Dave. Um, and then really uh, it was pretty extraordinary. So it's, you know, it's a blend of, um, we got, we got whiskey from Tennessee. We've got bourbon from Kentucky. We've got rye from uh, Indiana. We've got bourbon from Indiana. Uh, we've also got Canadian rye in there. Uh, Dave was huge on uh, uh, working with Canadian rye. That's, you know, that's where we started with, uh, with whistle pig. And it's, it's been pretty extraordinary just to see how the collaboration came together. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, you could take all these great whiskeys that, that already stand on their own and make it into, you know, blend it into a, a phenomenal whiskey. And, and you really honestly could just stop right there. You know, you've already got a great whiskey. Uh, but, you know, Dave kind of kept going down the, the rabbit hole uh, because, you know, he's, he's working with Metallica. There's got to be some really cool elements to, to being able to, to pair all this together. Um, so he, uh, he decided to do a cask finish in, in black brandy barrels. Uh, it's a Spanish brandy. Um, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of cask finishing. My my background is in. Uh, uh, I was the former master distiller for uh, Stranahan's Colorado whiskey, and I created this uh, this blend that it was an in-house blend of, of cask finishes. So I take the whiskey that was already aged for four years and cask finished it Madeira cask or or Malbec or uh, cognac or rum, and then I would just you know kind of blend these together to make something uh, pretty extraordinary. So I was really excited about the fact that this was a, uh, a cat finished whiskey when we came on. Uh, and then uh, I'll get into the, uh, the, the sonic enhancement process, but that was the last step. It was, you know, we could have stopped at the, the cask finishing, but, um, but Dave really, uh, you know, he had the idea to marry the, the, uh, uh, for me, the first, you know, the first I had was, um, you know, when I when I first started, when I was first approached by the band to to take over for Dave, but Dave unfortunately passed away uh, in uh, November of 2018. I was actually at the event that he, uh, he passed away at. Uh, it was uh, pretty sad for for the community. You know, he was uh, he was well loved and well liked, and um, um, but I was approached uh, shortly after by uh, by someone from the band about. Taking over, and it was, uh, uh, then that was that first question I had was, tell me about this black noise sonic enhancement. I want to know, I want to see the science behind it, and uh, I'll, I'll get into that here in a little bit. It, it's pretty extraordinary, actually. Um, so are you guys, you guys sipping on, on, on some whiskey, or you got a little black and red? Yeah. Oh, nice. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he has he has some black and on hand. <laughs> So uh, I think the thing on everybody's mind is, do you get free? Uh, do you get like free uh, Metallica swag? Do they just, like, totally check you out and brand merch. You know, I've I've got a pretty good deal on 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 it. You know, we're 
just uh, the Metallica family gets, uh, you know, they get everything at cost, which is good. Um, and I, I have been fortunate to, uh, to to get to go to a couple of shows before uh, before the COVID struck. Um, so uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty extraordinary. Just getting to know these guys, they're they're really really down to earth. I mean, they're 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 pretty humble guys. You know, they're uh, um, you know just getting to spend spend a lot of time around them, getting to know them as as we've kind of grown. They are, you know, they approach everything as artists. You know, they're they're the artists first and foremost. So they are. It's it's very refreshing to be able to work with them because they're you know they're you know they're like okay, well you're the guy, you're the, you're the artist, you're the whiskey artist. You you run with you know you run with making the whiskey and, and you know creating new expressions and uh, and just when you when you finish it, send me a sample. You know, send send us a sample and we'll we'll see how it goes. So. I, I really I feel pretty fortunate um, and pretty honored to actually work with these guys. Nice. Well, so, where did the idea uh, to launch Black and Whiskey come from? I mean, was this a was was is I'm I'm taking a stab at this as Metallica. Are th these guys really big into uh, into the whiskey bourbon scene? You know, I you know, kind of historically they were vodka guys uh, back in the day, but. You know what they did was they actually, um, you know, they've got they've got Metallica newsletters and they've got their social media, and they just started putting these questions out to their fans. They're like, "Hey, if we were gonna, if we were gonna make a, a spirit, what what would you guys want? You know, what do you would because they were really kind of bringing the fans in on the on the idea. And the the thing that came back uh, the most was whiskey and beer. Mm. Uh, so they they do have uh, they do have a beer made by Stone Brewing. Uh, you know they make arrogant, arrogant bastard, and and a few of those others. Uh, uh, and they made a, a they made a beer called Enter Night, um, and uh, and then the whiskey, uh, we uh, we actually brought. You know they wanted that to stand on its own. So Stone Brewing makes the beer, uh, but we uh, we actually own the whiskey outright. The band owns the whiskey, so it's good. So how many uh, different whiskeys do you guys um, do you guys have out right now? Um, right now we just have the, we've got the, you know, we've got the original, um, you know, this is, this is our original. And then, uh, I just, uh, just launched literally, uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, the cask strength version of this. So we've got, um, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, in the whiskey world, we always want something a little stronger so we can, you know, mm -hmm. add a little water to it and, uh, and water it down to taste. And that was something that, um, you know, we wanted to do a single barrel program, but because we're a blend, it's really difficult to do single barrel right now, um, mm -hmm. as it stands. Uh, so, you know, having the, uh, having the opportunity to be able to do a cast strength, uh, and we just launched that in a couple markets. We launched that in uh, Kentucky and Florida. Um, and, uh, I mean, to, to, to great, to great response for sure. So I noticed, uh, on the online website, you guys had several different batches and, and I know you're going to get into the whole black noise and, and that create creative uh, uh, music with blending it with the whiskey. But tell us about the batches. Is there a way to identify which batch uh, on the bottle? Yeah, um, that's, and that's a great question. This is where, this is where the sonic enhancement, you know, comes in to play. Um, so on the, on the bottle, you've got, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, that's uh, one, you can see batch 102. It's right yeah. around the neck of the bottle. Um, so you can go to the store and, and kind of select your bottles. What we do in the in the black noise process is we take uh, Metallica playlists that are curated by the band members themselves. They take turns curating uh, a playlist. Um, so, you know, for example, like Batch 96 was Kirk Hammett. So Kirk Hammett would pick out, you know, seven or eight songs or nine songs that he wanted uh, for that playlist. And we have a, a proprietary device that we we use that is created by Meyer Sound. Meyer Sound is the uh, is the, the sound company that creates the the wall of sound for Metallica's tour uh, touring rig. Um, so they actually created this proprietary device that we can play uh, the playlist, the Metallica playlist, at a very low frequency uh, to the barrel. Now, when you when you play at that low frequency, it it creates a, a really rapid vibration. Uh, so that vibration is what what uh, what I've researched is is acoustic cavitation. So acoustic cavitation takes uh, the whiskey on a molecular level, turns it down into like almost a needle point, 
and it's moving in and out of the barrel at a, at a really rapid pace. Um, I actually have a, I got a whiskey stave here. Um, do you can see, uh, you, this is you had that prepared ahead of time, didn't you? What's that? <laughs> so you had that prepared ahead of time, didn't you? I did. I was, uh, well, I do a lot of, uh, uh, distribution, uh, distributor meeting. Uh, so we're, you know, trying to explain to these guys what, you know, get a, get a visual. Uh, but I actually have a bunch of barrels in my backyard and I, um, one started falling apart and I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can use this as a visual. Um, but you can actually see that, uh, you see that whiskey line right there. Um, mm -hmm. so when you char the wood, um, all the natural sugars, the vanillins and, uh, and all the tannins of the wood are going to form a, a, a caramelized band of sugar right there. And uh, so the whiskey is going to interact with that. It's going to pick up all that flavor. So this is what we call the red line. And when we're doing the black noise process, the uh, the whiskey is moving past the red line and picking up all these crazy flavors from beyond the red line. Uh, and we we actually had a um, we did a, a test where we took a, a barrel that we did the, the black noise process to. And then a barrel that we did not do the, the black nose process to, took samples from both and sent them off to the lab. And the lab uh, report came back and uh, we're looking for nine different markers in there. You know, the spectrophotometer will measure color, you know, depth of color, um, just a variety of, uh, of, of things that we're looking for. And every single one of those markers, those nine markers were elevated in the, in the, in the sonic enhancement barrel. So it, it proved that, that the, the, the black noise process works. Uh, which is, I mean, to me, I feel like it's just scratching the surface of, of what we start, you know, doing with that sonic enhancement. Uh, there's, there's some uh, uh, videos on uh, YouTube where you can look up where a guy will have a speaker, uh, put a, he'll put a hose in front of the speaker, and water will be streaming down, and then he can, he can start to uh, dial in and, and, and change the frequency, and you'll see the water actually start to spiral. Um, so you, and depending on what, what frequency it is, the, the, the spiral is tighter or, or longer, um, which is kind of crazy. I mean, it's just, it just shows you how sound can actually affect liquid. Um, so that's, uh, so you, you can actually go on blackandwhiskey.com, look up the batch number of the bottle that you're drinking, and there's going to be a little Spotify icon right there. And you can take a photo of it with your phone and it will actually populate that Metallica playlist um, on your Spotify. So you can actually listen to playlist that was used in uh, the sonic enhancement process on the whiskey with the bottle that you're actually drinking. So, I mean, this is, this is really cool. And I mean, completely creative, but I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just so interested by this. So you're, when, how long are these playlists? How long do they play to these barrels? I mean, is this something that goes on for a long period of time or is it um, a lecture? Like, yeah, no, it's a good question. Cause we, we, you know, we're doing the cask finishing uh, during the, the the black noise process. We're also doing the cask finishing. So really, uh, it, we're, we'll, we'll do the sonic enhancement for as long as that, that whiskey is going to be finishing for. Uh, so with the finishing, it's really, you know, I'm tasting it every week and all the way up to the very last week. We're like, all right, it's ready. You know, let's, let's pull it. Um, so it could be 10 weeks. It could be, I mean, it could be, honestly, if we have fresh barrels, it could be two weeks. But it could be two weeks all the way up to 14. Is mm -hmm. generally is the window that I've that I've uh, been in there, and it's and it's 24 hours a day. And again, it's a, like a, it's a low frequency, so it's not like you're walking into a barrel house and it's just. What did we lose him? Robbie, there. I mean, couldn't have stopped you at a better moment. Yeah, <laughs> it was so into it that it just it shut everything down. Yeah. Well, we're gonna give them a chance to reconnect here, but what are you guys sipping on? Such an interesting concept. You haven't tried it. Nashville Barrel Company. Great rise out there right now. Seven year MGP rye. I mean, these guys are doing a great job putting a lot of barrels out there. Um, good stuff. What do you have? I've got well, I have a lacking sample. We'll see if uh, Rob gets back on. We've got the that sample, and then I've got uh, Dark Door. It's interesting. It's not actually. It's not technically a whiskey. Um, 
just because it is it's like 50 percent whiskey and 50 percent a um like they make an ipa beer and then they distill it down um it's ricky you tried it right an ipa whiskey that i have uh i don't know yeah dark, dark you try yeah uh, you know, I think I did have it with you uh, the second to last time I saw you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ricky, what's in your glass? Uh, Greg, what was it that you got me for my birthday? What's it called again? Something Tears? Writer's Tears? Yes. I have some Writer's Tears that Gregory got me. I usually drink more often when I see him, so I don't kill my stores too much, but this is pretty good. Um, Listen, yeah. I, I would drink if I had to spend time with me, too. Huh. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty fair point, honestly. <laughs> we, we've lost Rob. I mean, Greg, what do you think about um, the, the whole music playing and, and interacting with the barrel? Well, I think just keep it, you know, keep it on with, with it, trying it right now. I think that we, we've seen a lot of really unique uh, companies coming out with different ways of aging whiskey. Like, uh, you know, talking about Dark Door when we interviewed them a, a couple weeks ago, you know, they do all of their aging. It's, it's like a machine that essentially. Yeah. I of that too. And like every day is like a season and it's crazy. It, it really changes the way. So like we've seen a lot of this stuff and we've, Oh, hold on. We got Rob back. Hey, about there he is. <laughs> right. in the, uh, in the, about, the, um, about you know the the way that you guys play the music and how there's a lot of different companies that are coming out with with different ways. And I think Will, when when we really kind of got down into whiskey culture and got it started uh, a couple of years ago, we were looking at that one article at the beach where they were talking about that. They were talking about how the sonic vibrations can change the way the whiskey moves in and out of the barrel and how different vibrations give it a different penetration amount into the wood and can change the way that it's aged over time. So, I mean, I am I would consider myself a fan of Metallica. I, I, you know, and I doodle around on the guitar and, you know, play a couple Metallica hits, but, you know, listening to Metallica, I can just imagine what playing that in a, in a warehouse would do to the, the chain. And it, you got to see, like, even just a difference, Will, like we saw when we go to these distilleries to, to do interviews and tours and coverage, how just like even 10 to 15 feet of, of uh, altitude or how yep. a warehouse that's located, you know, 100 yards from another warehouse can completely change the flavor of a whiskey and the quality of that whiskey. So the fact that you're doing something like changing the vibrations for an extended period of time it does not surprise me at all that that creates a totally unique profile for a type of whiskey. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty mind boggling. Cause I'm, you know, I've been, I've been uh, making whiskey for 14 years and you know, this was, uh, this was something that always, I, I was always interested in like controlled cavitation and, you know, different, different kind of aging and uh, finishing methods. And uh, when I, when I first heard about this, I was pretty, I was pretty blown away because I, it made perfect sense to me, you know, like when, especially when you see it actually in motion, you see the vibration. I mean, we've all been at a concert where we, you know, you're walking in front of a, a wall of speakers and you feel that, 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 that kind of vibration in your chest, you know, it's, uh, um, that's what's, you know, that's what's going on inside the barrel. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool just to see, you know, where we can start with this. You know, I, I'm really, uh, you know, when, when I was with Stranding Hands, you know, like you're talking about altitude, you know, in Denver, which is where I'm at, um, and that's where Stranding Hands is. That that is, uh, you know, a high desert. You know, it's a high, it's high desert. Uh, you know, dry climate. So you know, we'd have to, you know, pump humidity and, and uh, moisture into the air to try and, you know, try and combat the uh, the angel share. So you know, everyone has their their little tricks and their methods for, um, you know, controlling the whiskey or enhancing the whiskey or. Uh, you know, just really, you know, adding these methods. So I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, with the sonic enhancement, Dave actually came up with that idea when he was a uh, he was a cadet at West Point, and he had, he was talking with the caretaker for the uh, the, the pipe organ uh, in the cathedral. There, it's one of the, the largest pipe organs in North America, 
And the guy was showing him this note on the pipe organ that he that he said, look, you know, I, I can't play this for very long because it, it, it just started to vibrate the building so aggressively that he was afraid it was going to bring the, the entire cathedral down on top of him. And that was something that stuck in Dave's mind. He's, you know, you know, maybe we can use something like that uh, someday for for aging whiskey. So, uh, and and what better band to do it with than uh, you know one of the, the the heaviest hitting bands in the in the in the world. Good. So, Rob, what's been some of your uh, your your favorite playlist and whiskey comb or whiskey batches so far? Um, you know, I, I, you know, so batch 81, the band, they all, they all built the playlist for that one. And then after that, they all took turns starting with uh, James Hetfield and then, and then moving on through, um, and then just rotating like that. Uh, and I've, I've really kind of enjoyed just kind of trying different batches side by mm -hmm. side. Like, okay, Robert Trujillo is the bass player. Um, he likes bass heavy, you know, solo driven kind of playlists. And a lot of people, you know, Tend to feel like the base of his, you know, it's it, there's a different feel or a different taste to that whiskey, um, and I got to be honest, man, I, I was, uh, it was very, very, kind of honored and, and humbled to uh, have been asked by the band to create the playlist for Batch 100. Mm -hmm. and, oh, cool. Yeah, so we did a, a special release. Um, so I, they, they said, okay, we want you to pick 12 songs, and we're going to release a special box set. Uh, batch 100 box set we're going to take uh the 12 so they asked me to pick 12 songs and send them to lars and lars would curate that down to six songs and we were going to uh, release a, a one record uh box set you know so what you got the the bottle of whiskey you have the uh the the uh, uh the vinyl record uh with the six songs that i picked mm. and uh lars liked all 12 of the songs that i picked so much he said no no screw it we're going to we're going to release a two album uh, box set instead. And, uh, and it was a picture disc. So they, you know, we did these, uh, we did some uh, photograph uh, photos with myself and the band on, on the actual vinyl records. And, uh, and that was so much fun to go down the rabbit hole of, you know, I've, I've been listening to Metallica since I was. Thank you. So it went to me, you know, some of my, my friends in high school, uh, some of my, my, my army uh, buddies that I was, you know, we listened to, uh, I think I'm, hopefully we're, uh, okay. Looks like we're having a you hit up for a second there, but you're good now. Okay, good. Um, yeah, the, uh, you know, I, I was deployed uh, with uh, with some of my army buddies and I, and we listened to Metallica a lot while we were, uh, while we were deployed. And I, so I was able to dedicate some of these songs to uh, dedicate you know, every single one of the songs to someone uh, or, or or people in my life that uh, that meant something to me. So it was it was really, I mean, a huge honor to be able to kind of get to make a Metallica record. You know, in a, in a sense. So it was um, that's one of my obviously I, I'm going to have a, a a little biased opinion about that exact playlist, <laughs> which is fair. So yeah. that was a that was a very um, engaging and interesting way of saying that Batch 100 is your favorite, <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to pull that one up. <laughs> so, so I've actually got some here, and one of the things that's crazy is, you know, and and, and uh, it's just how, um, and not in a bad way, how nice and flavorful and sweet the blackened whiskey is. It carries a lot of flavor, but not so much heat. You know, it, right. It's very, very good, and it was surprising because you know you never know what you're going to get into. And when somebody has something that's like, "Hey, we play," you know, we play Metallica albums. You're like, "Okay, well, really, you know, you know that that can affect it." But you're like, "But does it really do a lot to make it really, really good?" And I mean, the answer is yes, objectively speaking. You know, trying this whiskey, there's a lot of uh, really good dry wood notes to it. There's a, a almost like a like a honey, like almost a like a mead and sherry finish to it. It's got a, a honey, but not just a, a blatantly sweet honey. It's got like a depth to it. It's like a, a very deep sweetness. It's got a lot of wood on the front, but not too much. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. You get a lot more wood flavor than you get that charcoal uh, finish. You know, that charcoal is there, but it's, you know, I, I find a lot of whiskeys have problem balancing out the wood profile with the char profile. And you'll just get something that, you know, you'll get 
a, a bit of wood on the, the front end, but then that charred flavor will just dominate the total tail of the taste. And this is really just, it, it's got a lot of flavor. It's got a lot of sweetness to it. It's a deep level of sweetness, not just kind of that surface, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of vanilla to it. It's got a lot, uh, it's a complex flavor profile, but it's also really balanced in that it doesn't pull too much in one direction to really just kind of, you know, uh, off center it. So I'm really impressed by it just, you know, uh, and I, you know, Will, Ricky and I, we, I mean, this is what we do. We sample with sure. Yeah, and, Robbie, uh, doesn't sound like he uh, he enjoyed it very much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. There's there's probably not going to be too much of a dent out of that bottle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's quite good, man. It's I'm I'm really really impressed by it. I'm I'm glad you enjoy it. You know, I I, I you're and you're right on the uh, you know right on the money. It it really does have a, a really fantastic balance when you're when you're you're kind of tasting those earthy notes and the spiciness of the rye, which I'm a, I'm a huge rye fan. Yeah. Uh, as as well and then you know the sweetness of the corn but then you know kind of where that mead element comes in that you're talking about is that that's the the, the brandy finish ah. you know you're, you're you're kind of getting that that um that kind of that that balance that's holding it all together is that um that kind of that that finish you know and, and that that's where finishing is always just in, intriguing to me um what you can do with, with the whiskey that you already have and then just a, a couple of weeks or a couple of days in a barrel, a couple of weeks in a barrel, uh, pick up flavors from uh, from a, a used um, used barrel that has had you know something pretty extraordinary in it uh, of its own. So I I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, of of that balance, you know, of, of trying to create that balance because you don't want to you don't want to come in hard and then just, you know dissipate with the finish and, and let it you know just dries off. Um, some finishing you will do that, you know, like you get a really dry wine. Um, and you and you put the whiskey in it, and the finish just like, just just evaporates out of your mouth. Do so you kind of lose out on that? You know that. You know, I, I always feel a, a good whiskey should have a beginning and a middle and an end, mm -hmm. and then all that, and then a balance in between all of those. But it's like a three act play. You know, you want to be able to, you know, yeah, you want to you want to be able to follow the story. You want to start the story, follow the story, and, and and end the story. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you know you get. And, and it's kind of funny and it, and it aligns and this is just me kind of uh, babbling here, but you know, w when you listen to a Metallica album, you know, each of the songs kind of feed into the next song and it, it's almost like a wave rather than, you know, you'll get some albums where the songs, you know, it tells a story, um, but the songs don't necessarily flow into each other. It's like, it's this song, which is radically different than this song radically. And you know, with Metallica, they, they kind of have that flow to their albums. And it's interesting because, you you know, when I taste a lot of whiskeys, I'll get something really heavy on the nose, and it's almost like a gear shift into the body. And then it's kind of a gear shift into the finish. Whereas, you know, when I'm tasting this, it sort of melds into each of those, and, and, and it takes you. So when you first taste it, you get, uh, you get that nice sweetness, but then it kind of cascades into that sweet note still there, but it cascades into that rye and that and in that wood, and then that cascades into a little bit of that barrel char and that dry earthy note. But you never really lose the other notes, which I right. find really really interesting. Because I mean, Will, you and I know, you know, we've had a lot of stuff, and Ricky, you know too, we've had a lot of stuff where you know the the um, the initial taste, you know, uh, the forward taste is really, really sweet. And then it go, you know, it gear shifts into something that's really savory and then it gear shifts into something that's, that's, you know, very charred and all of those really prominent flavors, those strong flavors really take over, but nothing really takes over here, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. I would ask when you were talking about the finish, like, you know, do you think uh, aside from that, is it, a lot of those sound vibrations that really helps blend those flavors and like coalesces it into what you're describing as having like a smooth transition to tell the story of it. Yeah. You know, that's a, you know, that, and it is a good question because I, my job as a, as you know, as a distiller, but, but my job as a blender, as you know, as a master blender for this is to maintain the quality and consistency of the whiskey. And, and that is always, and the, and the way I'll do that 
um, from, you know, from, so, you know, we got batch, uh, batch 102 here. So batch 101, I, I would have had a control sample where I'm nosing and tasting, and then I'm, I'm, I'm creating my blend. I've already got a, a base profile of what I'm looking for. And uh, I try and match that last batch so that it's, that it's as, as close as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and what's exciting to see is, is when we, we apply the black noise process to it after that, where that will change you know we want it to be just a little bit different we want each batch to, to be uniquely um a little bit different but always with that same uh depth of quality um from the whiskey so i i really do feel like um you know the the, the music does come into play at that point you know, because I'm, it's, it's my job to ensure that that flavor profile is not so extremely different from the last batch that we put out uh, or the last 10 batches we put out you know, there's always going to be subtle differences. You know, if you're, if you're, um, you know, your 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 whiskey sources um, are pulling barrels from different levels in the in the rack house or different barrel houses. You know, the the balance of trying to take some of these astringent notes out here and and and, and maybe uh, balance it with a, a little bit of sweeter notes here, and uh, you know, that's that's always the that's always the play. That's always the the, uh, the task for me. Uh, which I love, of course. You know, that's like that's what so much fun to really kind of to identify and go down that. But I do feel like the um, the music is where the changes start start do happen. Well, even even, even subtly. We are uh, we're going to be winding down now for our thirty minute whiskey Wednesday. Um, but I want to give you an opportunity. Is there anything else that you want to share with us, or anything you want to talk about? Black end. Um, where is it available? Yeah, so um, we are we're getting out there. I think we're in almost 30, 30 states right now. Oh, wow. uh, so uh, where where are you guys based out of? Florida and uh, Will. Oh, Florida, yeah, Let's see. yeah, you're Florida. definitely definitely covered in Florida. Florida gets uh, actually Florida gets all the specialty releases, so you guys should be able to find the cast strength uh, down there as well. And we just got into Publix down there, um, so Publix is going to start carrying black, and which uh, which that was a huge win for us as well. Um, but I will say, uh, next year, the band, uh, the band turns 40, uh, Metallica is turning, uh, 40 years old as a band. And, um, I've been working diligently on, uh, creating a really special limited release for, uh, for their, uh, their 40th anniversary. So there's going to be something really extraordinary. I'm doing, uh, uh, working on a collaboration with, uh, an amazing whiskey. I think you could um, it or it it, uh, it already knocks my uh, knocks my, my boots off. And I gotta tell you. It, uh, so well, next year, keep your eyes peeled for that. Well, we will be eagerly awaiting to review that and for our invites to uh, whatever fortieth party. Fortieth Metallica bash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got we get the little lanyards right with the yeah. <laughs> right yeah the little backstage passes. We um they're uh, where they do their recording is uh, is called uh, it's. Uh, what they call HQ, and it's in San Rafael, California, and they, uh, um, and I've gotten to spend a lot of time with them there, and it's, it's just, it's like a, it's like a Metallica museum. Everywhere they travel in the world, you know, people throw stuff up on the stage, and they, they literally bring all that stuff home and just hang it up on the walls. They've got flags from, you know, all over the world, and um, just different stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, but they are, they're actually playing um, uh, November 14th, uh, Metallica has a, cha a charity called uh, All Within My Hands, and All Within My Hands is uh, uh, they're playing a live uh, acoustic uh, show from HQ on uh, November 14th. So you can actually go to uh, the Metallica website. Uh, you can buy tickets ahead in, uh, in advance. But this is their first worldwide pay for pay per view that they've ever done. Uh, so they're it's going to be pretty extraordinary. Excellent, man. Well, if you got, if you uh, email us that link and we'll share it to Whiskey Culture, because I, I know we've got a lot of uh, a lot of music fans that that follow our page as well. It seems like every time something has music associated with it, people kind of are jumping at the chance. So we'll share sure. that to the page. And um, thank you so much for being on with us and, and taking the time. Pleasure. Um, I do want to make, and, and this is kind of pivoting. It's it's uh, on the personal side. Um, I have a, a friend that I went to high school with, um, and I'm just making an announcement here for that. He, uh, is, has 
found out he's got late stage leukemia. Um, he's battling right now uh, for his life. I'm going to be sharing a link so that you can learn more about that, uh, hear about his story and, and follow that. And um, if you want to make a donation to the family, great. If not, just sharing his story would be great. Uh, everyone send positive thoughts, prayers, vibes his way. Um, 2020 has been hard for everybody, but it's been especially hard for him. Um, and I mean, he was given six months with a very low chance of success, but he's going for it anyways, getting the treatment and trying to beat it. So, uh, we'll be posting that link later today. Um, but, or later tonight, but with that, um, thank you, man, so much for being on with us. Thank you for taking the time. Um, we'll be sharing the details, uh, with whiskey culture on the, um, live from HQ on November 12th. Um, and we're looking forward to that 40th release coming out. We're looking forward to uh, to reviewing that and maybe having you back on to talk about that as well uh, before it before it pops off. Cool, Jens. It's been a pleasure. I always uh, love talking whiskey with uh, people who love whiskey. So it's been uh, it's been a good time. I appreciate it. Yeah, like looking uh, forward to exploring your brand. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers, my friend. All right, Jens. Thank you. Have a good night. Take Bye. care. You too. See you guys next Wednesday. <laughs>